What's up guys? So I've been working on the hatch today and as you guys know I put the two uh, fittings on the front of my valve cover to help keep the oil from overflowing and when I was racing that Mustang and that night we took it out I just had these uh, rags kind of zip tied over those to help keep any oil coming out of those contained somewhat but uh, I need to get a catch can for it and I'm working on that right now it's over here I already have most of it done all this is is three inch intercooler piping and then I just hole sawed a, a three inch circle out of it got that already welded on the bottom I have one fitting one fitting already tacked on there and I have this filter that's gonna go on top of it it's actually gonna fit like inside of it you just press it in there I can't do it with one hand right now but uh that goes on nice and easy and then I have this baffle made that I still need to weld in and that will just go inside like that and that'll just help keep the oil to dir direct it down into the bottom of the catch can instead of like trying to fling out of the filter so I'm getting that done right now also I'll add this little uh I don't know what you call this, but it's a little hose. I got this off a catch can. What are you doing? Still hooked up to the Bluetooth speaker. That speaker is loud. Anyway, uh, I got this off a catch can someone sent us, and I'm just gonna put this on the side of that. That'll just let me know the oil level if it fills up, which hopefully it doesn't fill up as fast now. And yeah, that's pretty much that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this welded up. Also got a new helmet, new welding helmet. Looks pretty nice, same one Hayden has. Works pretty good so far. He also got the downpipe done for the Evo. Looks real nice. Just got that done. Yeah, that shit took forever. All those pie cuts. Yeah, yeah my camera wasn't really focused on them, but. Oh, that's fine. They don't yeah, there they go. Great, yeah, no, they look pretty good. There's a really tight radius in there. Yeah, I know I left and you were still working on it when I came back. Yeah. It was a good couple problem. hours. I just need to get my purge plugs made so I don't have to use the damn tin foil. The tin foil like pops out all the time. Yeah, to, to back purge it with wait gas. For it and let the purge go back through it. Just got the catch can all welded up. Came out pretty good. Got the little oil level tube on the side there. I just drilled a couple holes, tapped that out. Still need to put some like Teflon tape on those to make sure they don't leak, but this will work great. So now I got to mount it up and I'm thinking about putting it right like that, right in this little corner. It'll be nice and out of the way. The hood will still shut just fine. And I already went ahead and ordered two dash 1090s AN fittings for my valve cover because the 45s I have, I don't know where they're at. Oh, here's one over here. These are going to be a little too, uh, not enough angle. I need 90s to get them more pointing that way. So I've got two 90s coming. Then I'll just run the hose from those 90s right under through here and right into the catch can. They'll be nice and away from the manifold. Shouldn't get too hot and it should look pretty good. I'm just going to make a little tab. It comes off this nut right there, just kind of 90 down, and weld this to that tab right there, and the catch can will be mounted. Also, I can show you the baffle real quick. Hold on, I gotta pull this out like that. So that just presses into the three inch intercooler piping. It's made to have a tube like going there, but I didn't mess with that. But got the baffle in right there, so should work good. Almost had a problem when I was tapping the hole right there because the baffle was a little bit in the way but made it work so might have to put a drain on this as well later on but not going to worry about that right now so I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted up and the catch can will be done until I get those fittings in for the valve cover well I got my catch can in <laughs> meanwhile I don't know what these guys are doing <laughs> it <loosened up> the <laughs> <laughs> We love. Anyways, now that my catch can is up here in the front and I don't have the catch can right where the battery used to be, it's over there now, don't have that in there anymore, 
I'm gonna put my battery back into the stock location and that means I can finally get rid of this long ass wire that I uh, never bothered to cut. So good thing I never dealt with it because it would have been a waste of time since I'm taking it off anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my battery back up there and then I plan on adding weight to the front of my car later on. So, oh shit, I'm gonna have to cut some more shit. But uh, I plan on adding some weights up under the headlights right here. So, not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, help get some traction. And yeah, real quick, I'm gonna get some pins to pull this bumper off though. Just pulled the bumper off real quick. Not sure where I left off, but I was just talking about adding weight to the front of the car. Also pulled the battery out. Uh, with the battery in the way right here, um, I wanted to try to add some weights off the front of the car right in this area on each side and with the battery right there, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So not sure how I'm going to do it just yet, but I plan on adding maybe like a, a bar and actually just hang like actual weights on there and screw it on each side. I can probably get like 50 to 75 pounds each side, so up to 140 pounds total if they'll fit. And hopefully that can make this thing hook better, but that's for future plans. It definitely needs some more weight on the front though because it just spins like crazy. But I also like having the battery in the stock spot a lot more. It looks way cleaner up here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it back in up here and yeah, get back to you guys once I get that in. So, got the battery back in place. No more super long wire that everyone was complaining about. Got that all out of the way. It's over there. And that's pretty much as far as I'm gonna get on the hatch today. I also did rip this wire for the boost controller that needs to go back to the positive. I'll fix that later. But, hatch is getting a little better, a little more clean. It's still pretty messy under here. But, it's taking some time. Everything is slowly getting a little nicer, at least from the front to the back. So, now to talk about the shopping cart. So yesterday I did get this battery for the shopping cart, got it all charged up. Uh, I had to like put the fluid in it myself, which is kind of weird, never done that before. But battery's good, just a little motorcycle battery. I also do have a switch hooked up to the starter through the solenoid. So when I flip this switch, it turns it over. And I will probably switch that to a push button start and not just like a on off switch like that. But that's good for the starter. I have been working on the steering. I'm gonna start taking all this apart and redoing the steering on the front. Make that nice so I can actually drive it around. I also did get a clutch for it, a clutch cable at least. This is kind of janky how it's set up, but it does work. This is just the end of a broomstick that I cut off and attached a handle to with my clutch cable and the clutch does work. I actually did drive it around the other day before I took all the steering stuff off and I could put it into gear get into the cart and then slowly let the cl clutch out, give it gas and it would go under its own power. I didn't need any help getting it started. So also did not crash into a curb this time. All right guys, so we also got this in the mail yesterday. I wish we filmed our reaction to it because it was pretty sick when we opened this thing up. But I'm just gonna read this real quick. Dear Boosted Boys, I was beating my meat until I saw all the comments to put a turbo on the go-kart. So here's a turbo. It's missing some hardware, but I think you can manage. My boy gave it to me, said it came off a generator pushing like 5 PSI LMAO. Y'all make my day with the vids, keep it up. My Instagram, that E36 though, put it in the video, LOL. From Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. So, Chris actually sent us a little itty bitty working turbocharger. It is the smallest thing I have ever seen in my life. Like it is so tiny. I don't know if there's anything you can compare this to, but this is probably the size of a quarter and this is like a one inch outlet right there. And I already went ahead and took the bolts on the compressor housing. There was only one, but I took it off so I can pull that off. You can see the tiny little wheel on that thing. It's so tiny. So, I don't know, that's, that's fucking sick. We'll definitely pro try to put it on the go-kart, but I won't be able to put it on for a while. I still want to get this thing running solid before I try to fuck with putting a turbo on it, but it is definitely something we'll do in the future. That is for sure. This thing is definitely really cool. So thank you for sending that. But definitely one of the coolest things we have ever received in the mail. This thing is just so sick. It's so small, so cute. 
So, like I said, probably gonna be a while before I would actually try to put this on the shopping cart, but if you guys have any ideas, let us know how we should mount this, what we should do. Like, I don't even know how I would set up like an oil system going to this thing and probably have to be all in its like own separate system. I don't think there's any way I can really tap into oil pressure off this engine. I honestly have no idea. It will definitely be a learning experience. But yeah, this little turbo is sick. Also, another thing I thought I should mention, I realized that we have not talked about the Wagos in quite some time. You probably want an update on those. So hopefully pretty soon, within the next couple weeks, I'll be getting all the parts I need for my blue wagon to get back together. And Charlie's still waiting on some rods and pistons that are on back order. Not sure which ones, like Vitara's or something like that. But whichever ones he is getting, they are out of stock right now, so he has to wait a few weeks or maybe even longer to get those before he can start putting his back together. But I'll probably have the parts for mine fairly soon, try to get that thing back together. The Wagos have been sitting for way too long, and everyone keeps asking me if these wheels are for sale, these XXRs, they are not for sale. They are for my wagon, and I've just been waiting to put them on because it still has its winter tires, and I have not driven it since it snowed pretty much. So once I get my Wago back together, I'll be putting these XXRs on that. I have everything for my wagon along this back wall right here. It's been taking up some space, and all of Charlie's stuff is like in these benches over here, and we just gotta get the wagons back together. They, they kind of started the channel, and I know you guys love seeing the wagons on the streets and all that good shit, but they are coming back. I just thought I'd keep you guys updated. We are trying to get the Wagos back together ASAP. So, pretty much it for tonight, guys. Uh, be sure to stay tuned because our local drag strip did just so happen to open up for the season. And once I get the fittings for the hatch, we might be taking a trip down to the good old 1320, seeing what this thing can run down the strip. I'm sure you guys want to see that. I've been asked many times for quarter mile times on the hatch and stuff like that. So, hopefully pretty soon we'll, go, we'll be able to take the hatch down, go drag race some cars, have fun, and... Yeah, maybe have the wagons back together by then, but we'll see. Never know. And also, thanks for that turbo, Chris, for the go-kart. It is, it is sick. Absolutely awesome. But that's it for tonight, guys, so see ya.